Hello and welcome to you all my dear friends. As always I hope you are incredibly well. Today's video is an excuse to play with this incredibly old and rather terrible keyboard. So for some very quick context, I was just, you know, digging around and rearranging the studio as one tends to do, and I stumbled across this old relic that I've had for the longest time since I was a child. And it got me thinking about the software synths that I've been using in my music as of late. I've been experimenting a lot with those sorts of textures, and of course, as a result, the temptation is there to go out and buy a proper analog synth, as some musicians do, assuming that going out and buying the next piece of gear will solve all my problems and finally achieve the sound that's in my head. It's a common conundrum for many musicians, as I am sure some of you are aware. We have a predisposition to going out and wanting to always buy that next piece of gear, expand our repertoire, and assume that more gear is going to equate to better music, which of course is sometimes the case, but not always. So while I thought it might just be fun to break this thing out and mess around with it and see what it can sound like, I guess I'm also considering it a little bit of an experiment or I suppose an attempted statement to say, do we always need to go out and buy that next piece of gear? Can we make do with what we've got? do some experimentation and come up with some not necessarily perfect sounds in terms of what we had in our head but quite possibly still some usable and inspiring sounds that we can actually incorporate into our compositions. So for the record this is a Yamaha Porter Sound PSS-280. In effect it's just a small like student slash practice keyboard. It doesn't sound very good as far as I can remember, but we're going to plug it in and I'm actually going to try running it through my pedal rig down on the floor next to me and see what kind of sounds we can pull out of it with a little bit of manipulation. I do hope the fact that I am using my existing pedals doesn't come across as like invalidating this experiment, so to speak, but I am using what I have. So I'm using a terrible keyboard and my existing gear to try and make some cool sounds instead of going and spending several thousand dollars on a new synth. And for the record, I am not a good keyboard player by any stretch of the imagination. This is purely just for demonstrative purposes. I'm gonna play some really simple and basic stuff. So let's switch it on. And without making any changes, let's just see what it sounds like. So not particularly inspiring right now. It does of course have a swathe of presets as you can see here and across here as well. So we can type in any manner of number combination, for example, 38 for the ocarina. Or we've got a church organ. For the sake of a laugh, let's choose something a little out there. Let's try a sitar. So as you can quite plainly hear, nothing incredibly exciting or diverse out of the box. What are we going to settle on? I'm going to go back to the cello. So that's got some nice grunt to it, and we'll start trying to add some you know, added texture. So I'm gonna throw on perhaps some reverb to get it started, add some tails to this, and see where we land. So back on the pipe organ there, it's actually sounding quite pleasant. That added reverb tail is actually quite nice and giving it something extra at least. All right, so I'm going to try adding in some delay from the ARP 87 by Walrus Audio. Let's see what we've got now. a little while 
detailed with it. I've got a Reverb X from Ranger FX, which is another reverb pedal, but it adds a lot of like grunt and distortion as well. So let's give that a try. quite nice and that nice luscious long tail is really taking off the edge of this very like you know robotic and boring sounding thing maybe as one last sort of added touch we'll add in the sub and up from tc electronics which will blend in some octave up and octave down and we'll see what that gives us sort of added complexity I guess making it sound like more than what it is by giving us that that idea or at least reference to some other notes so pretty cool stuff maybe just for a final laugh I'll throw on one of my overdrive pedals and I'll see what that gives us not too bad possibly usable in some contexts it's sounding a little abrasive to my ears but i think you could sort of mellow that out and make it sound a little bit better once you're in the mix speaking of which now while this is actually sounding a lot better just by adding a few effects in one thing that's getting me just a little bit is the attack of the instrument so that initial note is quite stark, at least to my ears. And so what I like to do a lot of times, especially when I'm doing ambient stuff, is washing out that attack with a really, really wet reverb signal, like 100% wet or close to it. I don't have anything on my board that can achieve that. Uh, of course, there are reverb pedals out there that most certainly offer that functionality. I'm going to use a software plugin. Specifically, I'm going to use the Valhalla Room, which I thoroughly recommend. It is an absolutely awesome reverb plugin. So I'm going to throw that on one of these samples that we've just recorded now and crank up the wet signal and see what it sounds like in that context. So if you ask me, that's actually sounding pretty freaking dope. Taking that edge off really gives out that sort of ambient pad sound, which I personally use a lot. And I'd say, again, quite a usable tone. And what I might try to do here as a final piece to this puzzle is create a slightly more complete composition using this keyboard and some other instrumentation, perhaps to do a little sort of ambient piece, trying to demonstrate that in a more thorough context, in a more structured songwriting context, this can actually sound like a usable, cool sounding instrument. So there you have it folks. I hope you did enjoy this experiment. Uh, if there is any thesis to this video, it is essentially to say, go out there and experiment with what you've got. I know as musicians, we're often tempted by the allure of new shiny things, but sometimes you can surprise yourself quite a lot just by grabbing the things you've already got and trying some combinations you normally wouldn't try. Getting a little outside of your own comfort zone, plugging in some things you normally wouldn't plug in together, and then just pressing some keys or plucking some strings and seeing what noises come out is most certainly a fun and rewarding experience. And who knows what you may come up with, because doing things in an unconventional way, it's not always going to work. But if it does, you are most likely going to land on quite a unique sound, something that most other people in the industry aren't doing. 
And if you ask me, uniqueness is sorely lacking in today's music industry. So that's going to do it for today, my friends. As always, your feedback and thoughts are welcome down below in the comment section. In particular, if you've explored weird and wacky sounds using some unconventional approaches yourself, please leave them down below in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you again in the next one. Have a great day.